Shiburi. Long time no see. I promised to make this video many many months ago but life happened. We moved to a new place and I changed companies and now we're here. So I'm very sorry for the delay. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please consider subscribing and I promise to be more consistent with my uploads. Also, please feel free to share this to anyone who might be interested in this topic. In my previous video about working in Japan as an English teacher from the Philippines, I briefly talked about ALT and Eikaiwa jobs, but today I'd like to go in depth about it. Why? And who am I to talk about it? I worked as an Eikaiwa teacher for over 3 years, and I've been an ALT since last year, so I guess I pretty much have the right to compare both fields. So just a disclaimer, there are already tons of videos about this topic, but what I will share with you today is based on my experience and what's true to my knowledge. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message like many of you did after my first video. And I will try to respond and get back to you as soon as I can. Also, this is going to be a very long video because I want to be as detailed as possible. I don't want to revisit this topic again in the future unless it's really necessary. So I will talk about the definition, classroom setup, types of lessons, typical schedule, dress code, main responsibilities, and some policies, salary, and different companies for each teaching field. And hopefully by the end of the video, it'll be clear which is the best choice for you. Let's start with Eikaiwa. Eikaiwa is the Japanese word for English conversation. So when I say that I worked as an Eikaiwa teacher for over three years, it means I worked as an English conversation teacher for over three years. Eikaiwas are very much similar to Kumon or any cram school, but the main focus is only the English subject. For foreign teachers, all lessons are conducted in English and teachers are generally discouraged to use Japanese in class because the schools want to create a fully immersive experience for the students. So if you're looking to practice what you learned on Duolingo, Eikaiwas are not for you. There are Japanese staff at the school, but they mainly teach grammar and test preparation lessons. Eikaiwas can be located anywhere in Japan. For schools under big corporations like Amity, Eon, Nova, GABA, Peppy Kids, and the rest, the school can be in a business building, a shopping mall, or anywhere that can attract as many attention as possible. Usually, these schools are located in the central city districts of prefectures, which gives you many options to choose from in terms of branches of schools. For smaller Eikaiwas like family-owned ones, they're usually located in either a business building or the same property as the owner's residence. Co-workers would usually consist of other foreign teachers, Japanese teachers, and managers. And classes are typically small in size. In my experience, the maximum number of students in one class was 8 students, and that was big considering that I worked at the biggest branch of my company in a region. Usually, there are three types of lessons. Private or man-to-man, -man, semi-private with two students, usually siblings or students whose parents are good friends, and group lessons. You may teach students from 0 to 100 years old. It is very common for Eikaiwas to provide lessons to pregnant mothers, newborn babies with their parents, students, parents of students, and even grandparents. Depending on your lesson, you might teach a class from 30 to 50 minutes at a time. Usually, the younger the students, the shorter the time of the lesson is because of the short attention span of the students. Since it's not like a regular school, you might see your students once a week only, or if the students are taking multiple lessons, they might come to school a few times a week. Most big chain Eikaiwas, like the ones that I mentioned earlier, don't require teachers to lesson plan, but instead provide them with the lesson plan, um, books and teaching materials as well. All the teacher has to do is teach the lesson. I'm sure that's not the case for smaller Eikaiwas and that can be both a good and a bad thing depending on how much freedom you want in your lessons. And please don't ever ever forget that Eikaiwas are businesses to their core. I repeat, they're businesses to their core. So don't be surprised if during training you're asked to sell lessons or other teaching materials because that's Basically, I think the biggest 
factor or the biggest part of the job. Aside from the usual conversation lessons, there are special lessons that parents can purchase on top of the student's regular lessons. Usually, these special lessons are during holidays like Christmas, Halloween, Easter, and most especially, summer vacation. Students in Japan get about a month or so of summer vacation, and in Eikaiwa's perspective, what better way to spend their summer vacation than learning more English? And of course, parents usually like the idea of their children learning more English specifically related to the season. Most parents still work during the summer, and by putting their kids in a kaiwa during summer vacation, they'd have to worry about them less. Speaking of parents, I forgot to mention that majority of these students have affluent parents who are capable of buying all these extra lessons for their children. A kaiwa lessons are not cheap, and these special seasonal lessons are more expensive than their usual lessons. Now let's talk about the schedule next. Depending on the Ikaiwa, work for a foreign teacher typically starts from 11 a.m. or 12 noon to 8 or 9 in the evening. Teachers get an hour of lunch break at around 2 or 3 in the afternoon, and this schedule is set up in a way that it can cater to students once they're done with their regular school. The lesson preparation time and other duties are all done within this time frame, and most of the time, foreign teachers don't do overtime work. Also, depending on how busy your school is, you'd probably teach up to four to six lessons in a day, and maybe a full schedule with eight lessons on Saturdays. To cater to more students, most Ikaiwas operate on Tuesdays to Saturdays, which means teachers have Sundays and Mondays off. Aside from these two-day weekends, foreign teachers are also typically get the time off on all Japanese holidays, including the long ones like Golden Week in April and May, Obon in August, and winter break in December and January. These are usually the only chances to take time off and travel abroad, and taking time off other than the designated ones are usually very difficult. This is because lessons of students are bought and scheduled in a yearly basis, and scheduling a makeup lesson is going to be very difficult um, for both the school and the parents. And of course, it is your absolute right to take a time off. It is yours, and you have the right to use that. But just so you know, it's not going to be easy. Now let's talk about dress code. Eikaiwa teachers typically wear suits or the summer shirt paired with the business pants. During cool bees season from late July to early September, every company in Japan encourages employees to wear clothes more appropriate for the hot and humid Japanese summer. For office jobs, these are usually thinner and lighter versions of their usual suits, but for Eikaiwas, they're just regular shirts, usually with a company logo on them. We are now in the pandemic, so everyone is wearing a mask. But before then, men were asked to shave because it's really uncommon to see men with a mustache and beard in the corporate world in Japan. There aren't really much regulations about hair as long as they are kept in a professional looking way throughout the day. And usually, if it's getting in the way of your face during a class, your manager or a Japanese teacher would point it out to you. As we all know, tattoos in Japan are still very much a taboo. You really can't go to gyms, onsens, and public pools if you don't cover them. And it's the same in Ekaiwas. You don't need to have them lasered before coming to Japan though. All you have to do is buy some of these plasters and cover your tattoos during working hours. As for shoes, the use of indoor shoes like the rest of Japan will definitely be applied. Outdoor shoes that are worn on the way to work are left by the genkan or the entryway or placed in the cabinets by the entrance. Now let's talk about some of the general responsibilities and some are probably very company specific. As I mentioned earlier, an Eikaiwa teacher is responsible for teaching classes by following the company standard lesson plans or the pre-approved ones. The teacher also has to give homework and check it to make sure that students' progress are noted and reported to parents. Depending on the Eikaiwa, Foreign teachers may also be required to make progress reports that will be given to students at the end of the school year. In addition to that, it is the teacher's responsibility to do the lesson explanations after every lesson. If you go around a kaiwas around the end of every hour, you might see teachers standing by the school's entrance with a book in hand as if book reading in front of the parents' and students' guardians. Although the main job 
is teaching. Let's not forget that the main clients of Eikaiwas are parents, so they must stay happy. In Japan, there's a saying, Okeyaksama ga kamisama desu, or the customer is God. I'm sure there are many nuances to it, but just keep that in mind. So although teachers technically have about 10 to 15 minutes of break between every lesson, that's not actually a break because that's usually spent preparing for the next lessons or lesson explanations. I think what you definitely not want to happen is finishing a lesson explanation with some of the parents and then another parent arrives expecting a lesson explanation as well. This will definitely leave you rushing and cramming to your next class. Let's just hope that when that happens, you don't need to use the bathroom as well because there is no time for that. As I briefly mentioned earlier, teachers may also be asked to sell special lessons or lesson materials to parents and students. So, if selling is not your thing, you'll learn to hate upcoming holidays because of this. Since most foreign teachers working at Eikaiwas have very little opportunity to use and practice Japanese, selling will most likely be done in English, and you can assume how that would go. If you're lucky, maybe a Japanese teacher is around to help translate your selling points. But what's even worse about these selling seasons is the sales quota for all the teachers. Yes, you heard that right. There's a sales quota for the teachers. Of course, again, this may not apply to every Ikaiwa, but most Ikaiwas have this. I personally feel very strongly about having no time to prepare for the actual lessons because time is usually spent in meetings on how to reach personal sales goals or the school goals. And I think it can be good for highly competitive people, but if you come to Japan with a great passion in teaching and teaching alone, then big corporation Eikaiwas may not be for you. You may also be asked to hand out promotional flyers around your school, make promotional posters, or update the school's website. Anything to help get the word out there that your school is open for more students. Since you'll be working in Japan, you're also expected to participate in the school cleaning, which may be done either in the morning or in the evening after the working day. This includes cleaning the toilet as well. Janitors or cleaning staff are not really common in Japan, and Japanese people are trained from a very young age to clean after themselves, so it's something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about the salary. This is probably the main driving point of most foreign teachers for choosing to stay in Eikaiwas. Yes, there are many responsibilities and your social life may take a hit as well, but most Eikaiwas, especially the big players in the field, pay really well. Eon, Amiri, and Benesek pay full-time teachers from 270,000 yen plus allowances and bonuses every month. Gaba and Nova pay from 1,500 yen for every 40 minute or so lesson and you can earn as much as you want depending on how many lessons you'd like to teach in a month. And this salary increases every time you renew a contract with them. If you feel like you can handle teaching many lessons and the added pressure of reaching sales goals and the other responsibilities that I mentioned earlier, then being an Eikaiwa teacher is a great way to earn money in Japan as an English teacher. Now let's talk about being an ALT or assistant language teacher. From the job title itself, an ALT is not going to be the main teacher of the class, but instead the assistant of the main teacher who is Japanese. This teacher may be the A Gotanto or the school's Japanese teacher of English or the homeroom teacher of every class. Most ALTs work in public elementary, junior high, and high schools in Japan, but I heard some ALTs also work at kindergartens and special needs schools. ALTs come from different backgrounds and cultures because part of the responsibilities of being an ALT is to represent another background or another culture to your school and to your students. There are many Japanese students who don't really get a chance to meet foreigners and by having ALTs at schools, students get a chance to learn another culture. FYI, the subject taught by ALTs is not even English. It's Gaikokugo or foreign languages. There are three major ways on how to become an ALT in Japan. One is through a dispatch company like Interact, Borderlink, Altia, and many others. ALTs from dispatch companies could be assigned anywhere in Japan, and I suggest checking the company's websites to check the places in Japan they have contracts with. I guess before we go further, I'd like to talk about contracts because this is something I only discovered after becoming an ALT. An ALT's contract of work in a certain city is almost always not guaranteed 
if under a dispatch company. The reason for this is in around January or February of every year before the new school year starts, different dispatch companies bid against each other to win the favor of the Board of Education of the city or the BOE. Some of the considerations are the salary and teacher training. I remember a former co-worker of mine saw a flyer from one of the dispatch companies after winning the bid which says ALT Yasui or affordable ALT. I guess BOEs want to save money as well. This is the exact reason why dispatch companies, ALTs, don't earn as much as others in the field and most teachers have to work side jobs just to make ends meet. I'll be talking more about the salary in a bit. The second way is through JET program, which is between the Japanese government and the teacher's home country's government. JET is one of the best, if not the best way to become an ALT because of the salary and support system. Teachers technically work under the government, so they get pretty much what government employees get in terms of benefits, if not more. There are different supports like mental health counseling support and also events that will really allow teachers to immerse themselves in the culture of their cities. For example, jets in my prefecture are almost always parts of big festivals and events and it's almost as if they already have a community even before coming to Japan, which makes transitioning so much easier. And the last way is by being a direct hire ALT, which means your contract will be under the city's board of education, so there will be no middleman. Most full-time direct hire ALTs get the full salary and bonuses like any other government employees. But this also means that there are more expectations. Japanese language ability is definitely the biggest consideration to become a direct hire ALT because if there will be a problem in the future, the schools or the board of education themselves have to deal with you directly. There wouldn't be a middleman or a middle company to discuss the issues about you. That's why teachers who want to become a direct hire ALT are expected to have a certain level of Japanese language ability. One more thing is the visa of the teacher. ALTs have instructor as their visa status, which means they can only work in public schools. And just like most working visas in Japan, securing, keeping, and renewing a visa can be bothersome to both the employee and the employer. This is one of the main reasons why most BOEs tend to go for jet or dispatch companies because they're already busy as it is and they can't be bothered with the additional paperwork of securing a visa for the teachers and also dealing with the other problems that go along with hiring a foreigner. If you can show the BOE that visa will not be an issue, then they probably consider you even more. So people with spouse or descendant visa and permanent residence have the advantage here. Now that you know the different ways to become an ALT, let's talk about what it's actually like to be one. Again, ALT's primary work is in public schools alongside with a Japanese teacher. Depending on your location, you might be teaching 20 to 40 students in each class, have 4 to 6 lessons in a day, and work up to 5 different schools in a week which means a different school every day. There's also a possibility that you'll work in one school only if the school is big enough to have English teachers every day. Like me, my school has over 1,000 students, making me their full-time ALT, in addition to the other ALT who visits our school once a week to teach all the English lessons for one grade level. School typically starts from 8 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon, and this working time includes lunch and cleaning time. If you choose to get the school lunch, you'll eat what the students are eating, which is always a very healthy meal. During soji, or cleaning time, students and teachers work together to clean their assigned areas. There are also club days, and ALTs are encouraged to join to bond with students outside the classroom. For lessons, MEXT, or Japan's Ministry of Education, has lesson plans available for both the Japanese teacher or JTEs and ALTs. Now, it's up to the teacher in charge whether to use these lesson plans or not. In my experience, it's almost always the JTEs who write their lesson plans to make them more appropriate for the student's level. There's usually an uchiyawase or meeting between the ALT and the teachers in charge of the lessons to plan and talk about activities and goals for the lesson. It's really difficult to talk about what the job is of an ALT in the classroom because it really depends in the school, with your partner teacher, and maybe the board of education in charge of your city. You might get a partner teacher who will only ask you to help with the pronunciation of the students or drilling the vocabulary during the lesson. 
or a partner teacher who would take teen teaching to the heart and would work with you equally in class or maybe a partner teacher who will give you all the freedom and who will ask you to take charge of the lesson. It really depends on the person you're going to be working with. Which is why I believe that flexibility and adaptability are some of the traits that will make ALT successful in the job. I would like to talk about elementary schools in particular because there are more elementary schools than junior high and high schools in Japan. So there's a high chance that you'll be working in one. Also, I'm an ALT at an elementary school, so I am more familiar with it. But if you'd like me to make a video about junior high and high school, then please let me know in the comment section below. Depending on your school, you may teach students from 1st to 6th grade. But for bigger schools, Gaikokugo classes start from the 3rd grade with a lesson once a week. 4th graders also get one lesson a week. And 5th and 6th graders have two times a week lessons. Each lesson is 45 minutes long and there's a 10-minute break between every lesson. There's also nagayasumi, or long break in the morning between the second and third period, which can be from 15 to 25 minutes long. ALTs follow the school calendar of mostly the students, so when they're on vacation, ALTs are also on vacation. And this includes long holidays like Golden Week, Winter Break, and over a month long of summer vacation. If you want more vacation days, then ALT is probably what's going to be best for you. I came from Aikaiwa, so I was used to wearing a suit every day. But when I started working as an ALT, I noticed that most teachers wear more casual clothes, but I still wore a suit every day. And I kept doing that for over a month, I think, until one teacher told me that it's okay to dress down. So I've been wearing more comfortable clothes since then. But again, this is really highly dependent on your school. My suggestion is still to wear a suit every day and just observe everyone at first and then you can adjust from there. Also, you can ask your partner teacher about it and of course, ask your company about it too. For junior high and high school levels, I heard it's more strict. So make sure that if you'll be teaching those levels, you have enough business clothes to cover your working days. The same rules apply regarding facial hair, hairstyles, and tattoos as in Aikaiwa's. Now, let's talk about the salary. ALTs under dispatch companies can get from 200,000 yen to 250,000 yen before deductions. Some dispatch companies like Interac and Altia pay teachers full during the long summer vacation. Borderling doesn't pay teachers during summer vacation, but the monthly salary is more negotiable. Both Borderlink and Interac prorate the salary for the months of March and April, which means teachers will only be paid for the days they worked. Altia does not prorate salary for any month and even offers bonuses. If you look at it from a bird's eye view, Altia seems to be the best dispatch company out there. They also offer great support when moving to your new city and help set up your new apartment without upfront fees. I don't work for Altia, but everyone I know who works or used to work for them have nothing but great things to say. Next is the JET program's ALT salary, which is about 280,000 yen every month in the first year of teaching and it only increases the longer you stay in the program. There are no prorated months, but the maximum length of work as an ALT under JET is 5 years. Full-time direct hire ALTs can earn from 290,000 yen in their first year and again increases the longer you work in the city. I'd also like to mention that the location of the schools could be anywhere in Japan. From a seaside town to a major city to the middle of Inaka or Japanese countryside, if you have a driver's license from your home country that can be converted to a Japanese one, it will give you more options and freedom when choosing a location. So that's it! I hope I made a valid comparison of the two jobs in this video and hopefully it'll help you decide to choose which one is best for you. Of course, there are other jobs for foreigners in Japan, but I wanted to focus on these two in this video. If you'd like to know more about other opportunities for foreigners in Japan, please let me know in the comment section. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or send me a message on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you again next time. Matane!